Hello everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm going back to 1979 to take a look at TSR Tournament Classic Module, The Hidden Shrine of Tomoachin. Part of the competition series of modules, this module was the first written by Harold Johnson, fresh off his editing duties of the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide, and Jeff R. Leeson. So let's pull open the cover of this old school module and see what lies within, shall we? Spoiler warning, I will be delving into the long, dank corridors of this vast labyrinth, so if you would like to play it, you may want to stop now and direct your Dungeon Master to this video. Still with me? Okay, let's begin. First presented in 1979, Origins Expo in a zipper storage bag with a light blue cover with the title Lost to Moachin, the Hidden Shrine of Lobotom, this module was the last to be released with a monochrome cover in late 1979. It would be re-released with a color cover in 1981 as part of TSR's new trade dress. Dungeon Magazine lists Hidden Shrine of Tomoachan as number 18 on its list of 30 greatest adventures of all time. Harold Johnson is probably best known for his other TSR module, Secret of the Slaver Stockade, which I reviewed earlier this year as part of my A series of reviews. Jeff Leeson is probably better known for his work on the 1987 release of the rework of the classic Judges Guild module, City State of the Invincible Overlord from Mayfair Games. The reason for two authors on this module becomes rather obvious when you begin getting into reading the thing. The level of detail not only to the room descriptions, but the architecture of the dungeon itself as well as the fastidious adaption of Mesoamerican elements. This was the module that introduced the Almond culture to the world of Greyhawk and is a loose combination of Mayan, Aztec, and others. To that end, many of the encounters use Mesoamerican names for the various god shrines and creatures found within, which adds to the rich atmosphere and immersion the module provides, and fortunately pronunciation guides are provided to help the DM. The downside to all of this detail is that it can be a bit of a slog for the DM to plod through the massive amount of text walls for just about every encounter. Box text for player information is provided, which helps significantly with refereeing this material, but even with the pronunciation guides, the DM will need to spend some significant time with the names before they will naturally roll off the tongue. In addition, like the Tomb of Horrors and Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, there is an eight-page picture booklet provided for a visual aid for several of the encounters. One of the illustrations for Room 37, The Bed of Selenon, is uncredited by artist Darlene. The cardstock cover is a three-paneled affair, beautifully illustrating the multi-tiered levels of the interior of the Step Pyramid that is the focus of this adventure. This is the first in the C series of modules, which stood for Competitive Player Competition. And as such, it includes the original scoring system, the rules for tournament play, and pre-generated characters. While TSR had previously released six tournament modules, this was the first that really had everything you needed to run in a tournament, including the score sheet. This module also introduces the classic monsters, the Nereid, and the infamous Gibbering Mouther, which quickly became excellent nightmare fuel for AD&D players everywhere. I remember running this in the late 80s, and for the Gibbering Mouther's confusion ability, I played Requiem for Soprano Mezzo Soprano from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Along with the excellent Earl Otis illustration, the players were greatly creeped out. Interesting, both Harold Johnson and Jeff Leeson were players in Jim Ward's Metamorphosis Alpha game, 
And in the silver coffer in room 19, there is a reference to to Nadral, which is in turn a reference to the spaceship Warden in the classic TSR Metamorphosis Alpha game. Piezo revisited the Tamoachan ruins as part of its Savage Tide series in the Sea Wyvern's Wake in Dungeon Magazine 141. Wizards of the Coast has revisited this module twice as part of the DM's reward for the Encounters program for 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons, and most recently in their Tale of the Yawning Portal release in which it was given a full treatment for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. The tournament introduction of the module has the players lost and traversing through dense jungle pursued by bounty hunters and seek out the ruined pyramid as a possible place for shelter. Before they can actually reach the pyramid, the ground gives way and they end up falling well below ground to area one of the module. Campaign-wise, the beginning isn't much different. The nature of the thing allows the DM to place the ruined pyramid in any subtropical jungle region in their campaign world and provide whatever reason they need to get the players to the ruined city of Tamoachin, and then start the module essentially the same. Thus cleverly, this is a reverse dungeon in that the players start at the bottom level of the pyramid, trapped and have to ascend through the maze-like corridors to find their way out. Conversely, the DM may also allow for the more conventional method of egress by climbing to the top of the pyramid and investigating the temple shrine there discovering the secret door and then descending into the pyramid's depths. In the lower level areas, 1 through 38, they are filled with poison gas and each turn or period of 10 minutes spent there does 1d6 of poison damage. If using the descent exploration option, players will most likely retreat once they encounter the gas, which gives the DM the opportunity to reset or replenish a few things. Or, to me, the more exciting option, force trap characters to askew careful exploration of the lower levels for a more expedient exit, which in turn will cause them to trigger the deadly traps to be found there, certainly adding to the excitement and tension of the adventures. The pyramid proper is both a tomb and a temple, and as such, bodies of the revered dead will be found here and there, as well as many shrines to the pantheon gods of the Almond peoples. Pressure plates that trigger traps and foul undead can be found here aplenty, as well as some really bizarre creatures such as the aforementioned gibbering mouther that have taken up residence within the ruined halls of the place. Players will want to move with caution, but in the lower levels they will have to press on, and press on quickly or they will be overwhelmed by the gas. Artwork for this module is by the early greats of D&D, Earl Aldous, Jeff D., Gregory K. Fleming, David S. LaForce, and David Sutherland. This is one of those modules where the artwork is imperative to the success of the adventure and adds greatly to the immersion for the players, not just the DM. Not just in the form of the illustration booklet provided, but the excellent detailed maps provided for rooms 42, 45, and 54. Getting a copy of this classic module is also pretty easy as it was widely distributed. Auction sites have this one going for between $20 and $50, depending on condition and completeness. This is also available for print-on-demand at DriveThruRPG for only $8.50, which includes both the print version and the PDF, and that's obviously a great buy. So let's take a look at the Hidden Shrine of Tomoachin on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. The sheer volume of work that must have gone into this module is right there on the page. The DM's ability to immerse the players in the ancient Omen culture is aided by detailed descriptions and quality illustrative aids. The module itself is a densely packed 32 pages of the classic early 1980s TSR style. The massive three-panel blue ink map is beautifully rendered and that greatly helps the DM in running the game. That said, this is a deadly module with some very intricate encounters, so this may not be appropriate for all groups. This is one of those old-school modules that challenge the wits of the players, not the statistics on the character sheet, and for those who do not do well with those sorts of things, this can quickly devolve into frustration. I'll go ahead and give this a style rating of 17. 
The major downside of this module is the prep time for the DM. There is no getting around the fact this thing is one massive text wall. Further, quite a few of the traps and encounters will require intense study from the DM so they can be run and refereed correctly, which may be off-putting to many. So if you plan on running this, be prepared to dedicate the time it takes to run it properly. However, this is also one of those kinds of modules that make you want to bone up on the culture that inspired it so that you can adequately add your own flavor to the module and expand it beyond its core presentation. This is one of my personal all-time favorite modules. It's a pulpy fantasy Indiana Jones kind of romp, and even if you've never run the thing, just reading through the encounters will provide you with inspiration for your own devious creations. I'll rate this a 19. Finally, let's look at value. The original print copies can be a bit expensive, but not overly so. The print on demand with the PDF is a very affordable $8.50, so adding this module to your collection is relatively easy. I'll rate this a 19. And that brings my overall rating for C1, the Hidden Shrine of Temelichin, to an 18. Very good. Thank you all so much for watching. As usual, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get updates when I add new content. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon yourself. Or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar, link in the description. As always, my friends, May your d20 roll true and game on.